Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. It's with me, Andy, and uh, I'm in a good mood. I'm in a good mood. I just wanted to come on here, make a video, and sort of just chat about my thoughts and feelings about the market uh, and how we've done, but also our ins and outs and things like that. So, yeah, drop a like, drop a subscribe, give us a comment, let me know your thoughts about them, at sort of our window so far. Let me know what you think you know, we could do a little bit better of, maybe what we need to do more of, okay? Um, I just want to start first and foremost with incomings. So you think Perisic, Fraser Forster, those are the first two. So that was before the that weird international break that no one really cared for. We then obviously get going, then get uh, Basuma. Okay, and then obviously then it was obviously the big, big one, Richarlison. We've also brought in, well, it hasn't been announced yet, but I... <laughs> I'd assume it's going to be announced tomorrow, Jed Spence. So I can't really say that just yet. It's technically six, okay? But yeah, with that fifth one, obviously, we'd probably have to just scoot, scoot past that one, okay? But long lay as well, okay? So those, those are technically the six, all right? How I feel about this window as a whole in terms of incomings, I can't really have many complaints, and I, you know, Spurs fans always have, will find a way to complain. We're a very miserable bunch, if I'm honest. Um, I think we're so used to, at times, thinking probably we should be doing a lot more. Okay, then when we start doing a little bit more, we demand even more. Okay, which is not a problem normally, but sometimes you actually have to just sit there and go, do you know what? This has been pretty good. So first, first two that came in, obviously Perisic and Forster. Now for me, Perisic is the most underrated signing that we've done. Okay. He is a born winner. He's done it across different leagues. Okay, he's been brilliant at international football. He's been brilliant in, as a whole, really. He was, you know, he's, he is a winger as such, but you know, actually plays as a, as a wing back. A lot of talent there. Okay, I think because it's a free as well, that's why it's so underrated. Okay, his age, yes, he's not twenty two, but actually, if you look at his stats for the last few years. He has been absolutely tearing it up, okay? So that was the first one. Fraser Forster being the second one, okay? The reason why I love the Fraser Forster one, okay, there's a few different reasons. Number one, homegrown. I've been banging on about the issues about homegrown and what that sort of leads to in European football fit sort of, sort of terms. But he's brilliant for that reason alone, okay? Secondly, Premier League proven keeper, okay? He has been in the Premier League for years now, okay? He's also done it in Europe as well at the Champions League. Everyone knows those famous nights, Celtics versus, versus Barcelona, when I think they had like 11% possession. They won 2 one somehow. I think it's brilliant, okay? I do really think it's brilliant. And actually, he did play last year quite a bit, and he was actually pretty decent still. So it's a really solid one. Um, so those are the first two. So that was obviously, that was pre that international break. Obviously, going into that international break towards the end, that's when we've really kicked into another gear. So Basuma was the one that came out of nowhere. The rest of these we've all sort of seen coming, okay, for quite a while. This one went under the radar, no one knew anything about it, and it just hit, okay. I remember being at the gym in the morning with a, with a, with a Brighton fan, just normal gym session. A couple of hours later, obviously, both got our separate ways into, into the day. And it's just come along and I'm like, oh my God, I only saw him a couple of hours ago. And it's, this is happening, you know. So it was a bit of a bleak day in terms of in terms of his day, maybe for for, for Basuma. But it it was the one that a lot of people talk about out, outside of the top six in terms of centre mids. He might be one of the best ones, okay. I think it's another layer to our midfield situation. I think... Watching Bentoncourt just oozes class. I do believe he is our best midfielder. Okay, I'm going to say that now. I still think it, even with the people coming in and who may still come in, I still think he's the best. Okay, I love the, the Ollie Skip, you know, homegrown, lots of potential there to, to really kick on. Obviously, that injury last season kind of derailed it, but then we actually got to see Hoiberg and Bentoncourt as a midfield partnership, and that really works. So like I said in other videos, Basuma may give us a different layer when it comes to playing different teams. There'll be some teams where you really want, you know, Bentoncourt and Hoi Hoiberg. There may be some teams where you like, actually, you play Hoiberg and Basuma, Basuma and Skip, Skip and Hoiberg. You know what I mean. Okay, I can run through. I can't be bothered. 
really think it's it's another layer to that midfield, okay? Then we've got the big one, the big boy, Richarlison, okay? Now, we've seen him in pre-season, all right? He's fiery, okay? And I love, the, I love the South American passion that we have flowing through that squad, okay? Him and Romero, yeah, they get into it last season, but it looks great. They look great together now in, obviously, the same kit. I think it's it's a versatile, proven striker who really cares about the club he plays for. 60 million, big money, obviously 50 with add-ons, and there might be add-ons with other deals, but let's just say it's 60 million. I, I, really, I do like the signing a lot, okay? Yes, there are better strikers in the world. We know there are. We've got one that is. But if you actually think about the fact that he can play across the front three, he is... And if Kane and Kane normally gets injured, he normally gets a, an ankle injury here and there. This is that backup where you it's not a huge drop off, and and that's what Conte wants. Conte wants a squad that if someone gets injured or someone gets suspended, that the next player, the backup to that position, there isn't a huge drop off, and I love that. Okay, so I really like the move. So you think of all of those players. Okay, it's probably around 90 million, those four players. Okay, because obviously Richardson covering a big chunk of that and Basuma covering the other third. Okay, going to the fifth one, Longley. Longley was the one that I predicted weeks before it happened. Okay, I felt like I was in the know somehow. You know, me and David Ordstein have been chatting. Uh, David, what do you reckon is going to happen? He's like, here, Andrew, this one, and slide it, slide it across your table, sort of thing, right? It, look, it's, not, it's not the sexiest name in the world. Okay, I understand. But he's got he's brilliant with the ball. And when I talk about Basuma adding a layer, this is another defender who adds a layer. Because when we are playing a team that we may have to break down, we do want a centre half that can actually knock the ball about. Okay. Davies walking in a in a boot right now, that's quite a worrying sign. So this was huge because the guys are gonna come back, okay, obviously from Korea, and they'll be going back into their two a days training sessions. Longley's going to be massive because he needs to get up to speed quickly, okay? Because there's a potential. Longley may start game one of the season because Davies is out, okay? I will do a video probably in the week who, or who I say, who my predicted starting 11 is. Um, but we're just going to wait for the Jed Spence one to go through and then I can say, right, oh, with the six new sign-ins and so on. But I think on a loan deal, there isn't much to lose, okay? We're not covering all his wages, Yes, there is no option to buy, but I've always said the reason as to why I believe there's not an option to buy, one, Barca probably want to be able to cash in and get 30 million for him when maybe the option would have been 15 million with us. But also I think we're going to be looking at Bastoni next summer and we're going to really go for him. I don't think we'll get a Gavardo next summer because I think a Gavardio winds up at Manchester City next summer or something like that, okay? Bastoni would then suit the system really well, okay? And to be honest, it's all about keep. It's all about reinvesting into the squad all the time, because Conte demands that. He demands excellence, and that's something that when when we talk about Conte last summer, I kept banging on about how much I wanted him because I knew this was going to happen. It's so nice that he's here with a pre season. He's already had six months before this, so he's coming into his first pre season. But he's already had, obviously, from from in the season now. I think it's going to be really great, and I think we're going to hit the ground running this season. And I think we're going to, I think we're going to be, we are going to be a problem against the big teams last season, especially Man City and Liverpool. We were a problem, okay. And I and I really hope that trend continues. And actually, we bridge the gap a little bit to the top two. You know, I, I'm not going to say I've always said we're not. I, no, I don't think we're going to win the league, but think of where we were at the end of the season. Why can't we be ahead of Chelsea? Why can't we close the gap to the top two? We're reinvesting in a really great way. I think it could be that next logical step, okay? But, yeah, just quickly, long late. I don't really see much of a losing a losing situation there. I still think we get another centre-half. Maybe a left-sided centre-half, especially with Davies potentially maybe being injured for a while. We don't know yet. Maybe it's the central centre-half. I know it's not Bremer. Bremer's uh, heavily talked about going to Inter, so I think that'll be happening. But... We shall see. Koundé obviously is not going to happen. That He's heating back up to Chelsea again and Barca because Barca have infinite money apparently and financial fair play means nothing to them. I just, I can't get my head around their finances. It's actually bonkers. Um, but yeah, Jed Spence is the last one. Okay, Jed Spence, that's the newest one. 
homegrown. 12 and a half million with add-ons. And I said this actually yesterday to someone. I said, add-ons, if we have to pay them, it means the player's done really well and we've done really well. So I, I'm sure we'd love to pay those add-ons, okay? Because there'll be some in, the, in those deals for a Basuma or a Charleston, a uh, Spence, as to say, uh, we'll pay two and a half million if we win a trophy. We'll pay two and a half million if we qualify for Champions League football. All these things, we'd make our money back quite quickly on. So that's why it's great. It's it's a, an attacking fullback. It's a really powerful, athletic, quite dominant at times fullback. And I love that. We've seen him against some pretty big teams last season in the cup competitions, and he was really, really good, okay? I like the move. It's 12 and a half million. It's not a lot of money when you really think about it nowadays. English player as well. You know what happens. As soon as he joins Spurs, his market value probably goes about 35 million just of English tax alone, okay? So, really like it. If I was to give it a rating out of 10, as right now, I'd probably say it's about an eight and a half, Okay. The reason why I wouldn't say it's higher is I do think we still need an attacking midfielder and I think we need another centre-half. We get them, I'll have to give it a 10 because eight players with some real quality, efficiency. We haven't even spent that much money when you think about six players. Spence being 12 and a half, Richardson being 50, Bassoon being probably about 30, um, Longley probably only a few million for the loan fee. When you think of all that, that's probably about what, about 100 mil? Now, the add-ons obviously may be more, but the add-ons you'll find will end up being through the season or into next season or the season after. So it gets spread out quite a bit. So, yeah, I think it's really good business. The James Madison rumours are really heating up, and I talked about it weeks ago. And again, it's like this long lay thing where I feel like a, I look like I'm in the know. Madison rumours are heating up again. Homegrown, got brilliant dead ball specialist there. He knows the Premier League. I think he needs the move if he wants to be in the World Cup squad as well. You look at Grealish and Mount and Foden. The, you know, those four are normally thought about as the attacking options. He can't get in the squad because of those three. Now, Southgate not knowing what he's doing is another situation there. But for Madison, it is that next step, okay, to go into a Champions League team, to play in, you know, some of the biggest games in the world when you're thinking about Champions League. You're thinking about, you know, at home to Liverpool, you know, away to the, away to City, all these all these games that are huge, and they're huge for Leicester. But when you go to a top four team, they're even bigger. They mean a lot more. There's a lot more on the line. It is the next logical step. Okay, so I really hope that we get that done. In terms of the second half, I'd love it to be Paul Torres. I don't get wrong, I would, and I think it would signify another step up in terms of look, we're closing the gap even more to the top two. Will it be him? I don't know. I don't know. In terms of outgoings, Bergvine, 27 million euros. I think it was a good deal. I really do think it's a good deal for him and us. He wasn't going to get a lot of game time. Um, I, I really do like Bergy. I think he's awesome, but he wasn't, a lot of, he wasn't going to get the game time. He wanted to go. We were cashing in. We cashed on him, which is brilliant. I mean, his funds basically would, you know, we always think about how it covers another player. You know, you think of loyalty bonus and signing on fees you probably think you cover Perisic, Forster, Spence and Longley from just his sale alone. We'll look to move off the Winxes and La Celso because La Celso to Fiorentina that's heating up. Ndombele, Regulon, Emerson, Tanganga to Milan is really really hot and I think that might be the next one that gets done with a loan with an option to buy a bit like their Tamori situation. Roden being loaned out, there's a lot of players, and there'll be, there might be one or two more, obviously, but let's just talk about those players. If they get moved off, you think of, you know, Pochettino into, you know, Mourinho into Nuno and all these guys, all these players that were their players, they now get moved away and Conte then has his team. And that's what it's about when you get a new manager. Build the team in his image. Supply him with what he needs. Eric Ten Hag is not getting that right now from United. We are doing it with Conte. It's vital we move these players on. First and foremost, we want to actually recoup some of the money. You know, Regulon, Winks, uh, Lo Celso, Tanganga, Roden, uh, Ndombele, Bergvine. You think of all these players we're going to move on, we're going to make quite a bit of money back, Okay. 
So when you think of net spend, there's probably a hell of a lot more in the in the in the bank when you think about those are going to cover and 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 some of those fees may cover the Romero and Kurosevsky deals as well. And I know that I know that might be a, a case, but some of it may be left for January where we want to go and get a player who we need. Maybe we get one or two in January just because we need them a little bit of a tinker for the run into the end of the season. So it could be that, but. Departures wise, obviously, it's quite hard to give a grade out of ten. I'd sort of probably give it a two right now because we haven't really done a lot. Bergvine being gone, that's a start. Lo Celso, Regulon, Endon Bele, um, Roden, Tanganga, Emerson. If these were all players that were gone, either so obviously Roden, Tanganga might be loan, but the rest being sold, I would probably give that about a nine out of ten in terms of departures as well. So. Now, if we don't get a lot of money in terms of what we think we get, so if we think we're going to get X for Regulon and it ends up being five million less, well, maybe that nine becomes an eight, if you know what I mean. But it would become the dead weight that we move off. We fit more into sort of the Champions League homegrown situation. And actually, the squad is full in terms of depth, but it's full in terms of good quality. And that's all that matters, okay? So anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think we need to do more of. Let me know what you hope we do by the end of the window. Players gone, players in, things like that. Like, like I said at the start, guys, drop a like, drop a subscribe, give us a comment and let me know. Anyway, I'll see you all later.